What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is the Knights of Horror here coming at you with another video. Today's video is a really special and fun video. I'm going to challenge a couple people to, uh, if they want, make a video like this one. I had this idea of a video um, just to keep up with the HHN spirits. Um, I had an idea for a video where I would tell you my favorite memories from the past years I've gone. Uh, we're going to start from me, uh, HHN 2011, and then I'll... Um, Hopefully each month uh, leading up to the event, uh, you'll get to see all the all the years I've went up until 2017. Um, but I think this month, because I'm a little bit behind, I'm going to do at least two or three. Not too sure yet. But let's get started. First, I want to nominate um, to do this. Uh, it's not really a challenge, but I, do, I would like to hear their stories on memories and stuff. Break down each maze they went through that year and shows they had that year. Scare zones, whatever it is. Uh, just overall what they were feeling on the event. Uh, I'm going to nominate uh, three people, Awkward Arsic, the, the League of Extraordinary Vloggers, and SoCal Exploring. If you guys want to do this video, that's all up to you guys. Um, I'm just curious to hear your guys' story behind uh, the each years that you guys went, um, when you guys started going, and uh, like I said, just what you guys experienced that the first year you went up until last year and stuff like that. Some funny stories. Uh, something that will be in your memories forever, something that you really like, something that you really hated. Uh, nonetheless, let's get this video started. We are going to start, like I said, with um, HHN 2011. Uh, let me pull up the maze list for HHN 2011 because I almost completely forgot. Alright guys, so HHN 2011 was the first year I ever went to um, Halloween Horror Nights whatsoever. I had went to Knott's Scary Farm in 2008 and was terrified of it. I was only in like the fifth grade when it happened. But when HH, when I got the opportunity to go to HHN, I took it because it was kind of a, a redemption. It was kind of maybe I can redeem myself from being scared of Knott's and step it up a notch to go to the uh, Halloween Horror Nights event, which I am so glad I did. Um, it was such a good time, and since then we've been going every year. It's a yearly tradition, and I, I and I just I love it. Um, so starting off with, uh, I'm going to start off with each of the mazes that um, I experienced. I didn't get to go through all of them, sadly. I, I, I only didn't get to go through, I think, one. I didn't get to go through one, and that was the thing. Uh, so that one's automatically uh, out. Um, sadly, I didn't get to go through it because the friends uh, that I, or the people that I went with, we didn't. they thought we didn't have enough time, and we only literally had one time for one last maze. Uh, out of the thing in Hostel, I think we chose Hostel. I it was a majority vote. I would have much rather went through the thing, but nonetheless, here we go. I'm gonna break down each maze and what I thought about them and how I felt. Uh, there'll be footage playing over me talking, so you can actually take a look at the mazes and scare zones and uh, sh stuff like that. So here we go. First maze, La Llorona. Uh La Llorona was really good maze. It was really well put together. Um, and I just love the facade of this maze and, and, and the maze in general. The story it was telling, it's one of the uh, the um, old uh, Mexico folk tales that they told, tell your kids and stuff like that. She basically drowned her kids for a guy, uh, immediately regretted that because I think the guy left her and then she committed suicide. Now her ghost haunts Mexico, you can hear her cry and stuff like that, finding her kids and stuff and I thought that story has always been a really interesting story to me and stuff like that. But walking through the maze, it was really cool. You start off in the church. Uh, you're supposed to be at the kid's funeral, um, and you see a bunch of like kind of like uh, old like uh, bodies just kind of sitting there, um, but they're all covered up and stuff like with like white veils and stuff like that. So you can't really see them or anything. So you don't know which one's real. There's at least four or five of them uh, in there, but there's only like two or three of them alive. So they do that old trick where you don't know which one's real, and then they pop out and get you and stuff like that. As you made your way through the maze, you got to see um, these statues that were like. Uh, the same thing there was like three or four of them down the hall but like one or two of them were alive and I thought that was always cool um, and then you go through like uh, different houses and stuff like that uh, you go through one scene where you uh, and I remember it cut it reeked in there uh, you go through one scene where um, her kids clothes are drowning in the water and you hear her cries and stuff and then as you go through the maze you see uh, different kids getting killed by La um, there's a giant one that uh, eats a kid from her legs and stuff like that which was really cool there's one that popped at you that was like a puppet and it was pretty scary looking all in all though this maze was really good if I had to rate it out of 10 I would easily give it an 8.5 out of 10 only because like this maze was so good um, 
and I, I really enjoyed it. It was the first year I went, and then it, it, it returned the previous year, and I'll get to that in another, and I'll get to that in the next video. But uh, moving on, we're gonna talk about Hostel. Hostel was really good. Eli Roth uh, never disappoints with horror, um, but Hostel was good. Hostel, uh, you walk through it. I, I vaguely remember it. The main part I remember was uh, the very end when they had these like dogs coming out and stuff like that. Um, but I'll probably go on YouTube to kind of refresh my memory. But uh, the video is playing on the screen right now. Um, but I, I I just know that uh, the makeup in that that maze was really good. At least um, if you've ever seen Hostel, Hostel is a very gory, very weird movie. A lot of death in there and stuff like that. So. Um, when you watch a movie and then you go through the maze, they bring that stuff to life, and I really like when John Murray does that. Um, it honestly gives me a feeling of, uh, like, wow, he's actually bringing a movie to life, bringing my nightmares to life. I really am digging that. That's really cool. So, all in all, if I had to rate this maze, it's probably, because I vaguely remember it, uh, probably 7.5 out of 10. Um, so, yeah. The next maze I want to talk about is Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare. Now this maze I do remember no matter what because this was one of my all-time favorite mazes. My first music maze I ever went through and especially being Alice Cooper, that's so awesome. Um, but basically Alice Cooper Welcome to My Nightmare, you go through uh, this kind of uh, house that's for sale and uh, they're playing the entire album of Alice Cooper's kind of greatest hits, Welcome to My Nightmare. And um, as you go through each room, uh, it's a different song playing that relates to what the uh, scene is. At one point you go into like an abandoned school and they're playing Schools Out. Um, in the beginning they play Welcome to My Nightmare as you're going into the maze. Uh, you see like, an, uh, like, a, like a bed setting and everything and you see kind of like a guy in like a onesie pop out and, and, and uh, scare you. Then you walk through and they have like these hanging babies on the wall and stuff like that. At the very end they had like a giant spider which I remember scared the shit out of me because I don't like spiders whatsoever. But nonetheless, Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare was, was really good, really well put together. I remember them even advertising this and they had Alice Cooper like come come walk through my nightmare and stuff like that. It was just so amazing. I, I will forever uh, love that. I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10 because honestly, like this was the first music maze I went through and ever since then I've loved music mazes. I, I hope in the future they bring them back, but uh, we'll see. I know copyright issues, it's hard to get rights to all the songs uh, and the band and stuff like that. So hopefully one day we'll get another music maze. The last one we had was um, Clowns. Uh, it wasn't my favorite maze, but we'll get to that in another video. The next maze we're going to talk about is House of a Thousand Corpses. Now, I'm a huge Rob Zombie fan. I love all of his movies. I've seen all of his movies, and I am super excited for Three from Hell, uh, the trilogy to House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, so, going through this maze, uh, bringing it to life, actually, not even lying, the first time I went through this maze, uh, I knew who Rob Zombie was, I just never had seen his movies. After going through this maze in 2011, that hooked me onto Rob Zombie, and I just fell in love with all of his movies. Um, Going through this maze and bringing it to life, it was awesome. At the when I first went through it, I didn't understand anything of this. Uh, I had heard of this movie before, but I never watched it. And then when I went through this maze, I eventually watched it and I fell in love with it. I love the the horror aspect of it. It's it's gory. It's it's awesome. It's like it's it's a horror movie. It's awesome. So going through this, it's cool. You you start off in Captain Spaulding's um, shop, and from there you make your way all the way uh, you know through like. Uh, you go like through the dark ride and then you go into the house um, and then you see all the infamous scenes which I really enjoyed. Um, one of the most memorable scenes I like in this maze was when you see Dr. Satan for the first time and they uh, explain that you know you go through the area uh, just like how it is in the dark ride and they show the exact him set up and, and, and doing surgery on someone and it's really awesome. On top of that, when you get into the house, there's a lot of infamous scenes that you see in the movie Rain Wilson's character. He becomes like the fish boy and stuff like that, so you see a version of that. You see like the cheerleaders getting tortured like you see earlier in the movie. Then you eventually uh, start seeing um, the movie progress as you walk through it. Uh, there's one scene where you, you're walking through like trenches, like at the end of the movie. Uh, where uh, the girl's walking through trenches and she uh, sees Dr. Satan and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed this maze all in all. All in all, this maze is honestly going to get a 9 out of 10 as well because this maze was just so well put together and stuff like that and it really brought House of a Thousand Corpses to life. And uh, yeah, The last maze we're going to talk about that was at the event that year was The Wolfman. The Wolfman had came out just that year. Uh, that was in the old House of Horror section. So they basically just took everything in House of Horrors and just made it The Wolfman, which I really enjoyed. Um, 
of course the maze was the same, I mean there was like the psycho scene, and they couldn't change much because, uh, you know, I mean they just basically put the wolfman popping out everywhere. But I think the ma the reason why I like this maze a lot was because the, the Wolfman costume was amazing. I really enjoyed the costume alone because I, uh, I'm i a huge fan of werewolves, like my cousin. And uh, just seeing the costume and stuff come to life was really cool. So um, all in all though, I think I would give this maze honestly a 7.5 out of 10. Only because where it was, it was in the House of Horror, so they couldn't really change stuff around. Like when you walked into the Frankenstein room, it didn't honestly make sense with the Wolfman. But I'm not gonna lie, they tried their best to make it, uh, make do with what they had. So, um, it was still a good quality maze. Uh, it told the story of like the, the 2011 remake with uh, Anthony Hopkins and um, Benicio del Toro, which I I enjoyed. Not a lot of people did, but I did. Um, they did do Bill and Ted that year, and I think that was the last. No. That was not the last year they did Bill and Ted, but I didn't get to see Bill and Ted that year. Um, we didn't get to see any live shows. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Terror Tram. The Terror Tram was um, Scream for Your Life. That was the last time we saw Scream at the event, um, and that was when Scream 4 had just hit theaters. It was honestly a pretty cool experience. The whole premise behind it was they were filming a new Stab movie in the series of... Uh, in, in Scream, there's a series called Stab that's based off the Ghostface Killer, and they were filming a new Stab movie on the lot, but then it actually turned into a real life where Ghostface was killing people and stuff like that. So now, when you get off the tram, you walk through, of course, the Bates Motel set and the uh, the Grinch set and, of course, the, uh, the, the Bates House set and the War of the Worlds set. As you walk through all of this, um, you know, you, you start to see uh, Ghostface, he's everywhere. Uh, at the Bates Motel, they're having a Stabathon, um, and it says Stabathon at the Bates Motel, so you can stay at the hotel and watch the marathon, but uh, Ghostface has taken over the hotel and started killing everyone. Uh, as you go, you see Ghostface kind of everywhere, pop out everywhere, and it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. I always enjoy uh, going to the... Uh, the infamous uh, psycho set every year. I, I just, I don't know why. Just being a filmmaker and stuff like that, going through that, you know, just wanting to be a filmmaker, just, you know, going through all that, it, it, it just honestly, it's it's a dream come true. So, um, and then as you make your way up, you know, you see Ghostface everywhere. He's killing people as you go and stuff like that, and he's popping out at you. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was pretty good. Clowns, it, it was a fan favorite. Um, I hope they bring it back one day. We will see. Um, the most infamous thing from Clowns was the flame thrower shooters. Um, a lot of people missed that. I miss it as well. But as Universal progresses over the years, it's starting to get constructed, updated. Lee, they're trying to change around the park to more family friendly, more current things and stuff like that. Which I, I, I understand. You have to, you have to change and stuff like that. Clowns was really cool though. It went all the way down and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed Clowns. Um, you have the chainsaws and stuff like that, so that was cool. Uh, they had Zombieville. Zombieville was pretty cool. That was along the uh, French uh, Street, I think, like that, or London Street, or whatever. It's the street from now where Walking Dead is at, leading all the way to the Despicable Me. Um, that was a really cool one. You got to see zombies kind of invade London and stuff like that, which was really, really cool. If you wrap around the corner from Despicable Me all the way to Animal Actors, that one was uh, freaks, so it was a bunch of freaks from like the circus and stuff like that, which was really cool. Um, walking through these with like the fog and effects and stuff like that, and they come popping at you and stuff like that was really cool. Uh, when you got down to the bottom lot, um, it was Reapers, uh, so they had a bunch of Reapers just kind of running around and stuff like that in the lower lot section where Eli Ross Hostel was and Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare. Um, if I had to choose a favorite moment, uh, going to the event. I think it was just finally stepping up and going with a bunch of friends. They kind of made it fun that night um, and stuff like that. The least favorite moment uh, was me not getting to be able to go to the thing because I would have liked to experience the thing. Um, it was of course the 2011 uh, prequel to the uh, John Carpenter film but um, I still would have liked to experience it. But uh, yeah guys that was my just overall HHN 2011 memory. I will never forget that year because that was honestly the first year I ever went and I loved every minute of it. So guys, 
uh, be sure to subscribe, like this video. If you did like it or if you have any other memories that you guys want to share from 2011, leave them in the comments below. I'm always interested to see what you guys say. Uh, and I want to see if you guys' memories are similar to mine or even different than mine. What you guys liked from the event, what you disliked from the event. I'm always curious to see what your guys' feedback is. Uh, like I said, Awkward R6, League of Extraordinary Vloggers, and SoCal Exploring. If you guys choose to make a video series like this leading up to 2017, um, that would be cool. You guys don't have to. Like I said, it's not a challenge, but I just, I'm just i curious to see what you guys thought about it. So thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, be sure to tune in next week. Uh, I'll have a new video of some sort out. Maybe a part two to this uh, for 2012 because I do have to catch up with the months. I want to do it monthly, but since I got injured, I kind of got held back. But I am a little bit back in the studio. Uh, make sure to watch the my, listen to the Mindless Horror Podcast. Uh, that's up... Uh, I would say every week, but we've been kind of taking a break on that just because of the injury and stuff like that. But, um, of course, I'm going to be releasing new uh, original content every week. Be sure to check out my second channel, Anthony Zaragoza, where the Nerd Fanbase podcast is at, and some more original content for anything of your... Um, just about anything, anything I feel like making a video on, it's there. So, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.